Hi, James here from Anyang North America. In this video, I'm going to describe the general operation of the hammer, and then in other videos, I will take apart the hammer so you can see how simple the self-contained hammer design really is. The basic concept of the self-contained hammer has been around well over 150 years. Anyang has been manufacturing these hammers since the 1950s, and today they produce hammers that have a ram weight range from 20 pounds all the way up to 4,400 pounds. To start, you have a motor turning a flywheel with V-belts underneath the shroud. The flywheel is turning a crankshaft that has two large tapered roller bearings in a sealed compartment of grease. On the other end of the crankshaft is a forged connecting rod that drives a large piston. When the piston goes up, it creates an air pressure that is transferred through the top valve to the top of the ram. It is this air pressure that is responsible for driving the ram down. When the piston is on its downstroke, it creates air pressure that is transferred through the lower valve that forces the ram to return to its up position. When you press on the foot pedal or this hand lever, it opens both the upper and lower valve and increases the amount of air going from the compressor to the ram side of the hammer. With this design, you have total control from light taps to full blows. Here's a short clip demonstrating this. Here's light hits, just barely tapping the board, all the way into heavy hits. These hammers are equipped with a fully automatic lubrication system. The oiling system consists of a oil reservoir, a flow control valve, a check valve, and an oil line that returns back into the machine. The way they work is when the piston is on the downstroke, it creates suction that opens the check valve and oil is sucked into the hammer. When the piston is on the upstroke, the pressure closes the check valve and stops the oil from flowing back into the reservoir. And the flow control valve just controls the amount of oil that goes into the hammer. There are also two grease circs behind these inspection plates that should be greased every 120 hours or once per month. Any general automotive grease will work as the shaft and the crank turn at such a low RPM. While we're on the subject of lubrication, oil is critical to the hammer in two ways. Obviously, oil lubricates the surfaces but oil is also needed to seal the piston rings as well as the wipers in both the compressor side and the ram side of the hammer. Now let's talk about what type of oil and how much to use. I recommend about one drop every three to six seconds. You can see the drips through this dome sight glass. It is also important to use non-detergent oil in the hammer. The reason for this is there is a bronze bushing in the connecting rod and non-detergent oil provides a better lubrication for the bronze bushing. The weight of the oil is also important. I typically recommend 30 weight oil. It's a good all around weight for general climates. If you're in extreme cold, you may want to use a lighter oil. I hope this video gives you a better idea of how the Anyang self-contained hammers work. This was a short prequel to a series of videos that we are going to release to show the inner components and how the hammers are disassembled and then reassembled. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you have any questions, feel free to call me anytime.